Stahl. It's time to get educated on your Second Amendment rights. Welcome to two full hours of Gun Owners Radio. Your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Dramisi, and Michael Schwartz will teach you about firearms, self-defense, and the laws that affect your rights to keep and bear arms. Visit GunOwnersRadio.com with questions to learn how to become a sponsor of Gun Owners Radio and get involved. Together, we will win. Now here's your hosts, Dave Stahl, Joe Dramisi, and Michael Schwartz on The Answer San Diego. All right, folks, welcome to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. The answer. Hey, 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 you're fired. We're not talking to you no more. We we're, got a pro. We're a, we're a uh, we're like uh, Laurel and Hardy. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. Hey, by the way, folks, does selling your home stress seem overwhelming? Well, let me tell you, it doesn't have to be that way. With Scott Vincent from the Codwell Banker Royalty Royal Realty, Scott is the perfect guy to help you sell or buy your home. Scott has been a San Diego County Gun Owner Board member from the start. So if you're moving. Let fellow Second Amendment supporter and real estate broker Scott Vinson help you sell your home and find you a new home anywhere in the United States. Call him today, 619-948-2459. Tell him you heard it right here on Gun Owners Radio. That's Scott Vinson, 619-948-2459. Or you can go online with Scott Vinson, V-I-N-S-O-N dot com. What's up, man? Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, Joe. You going to get any kids? You should in your neighborhood. Uh, I don't know. No, not, not last night. I'm assuming they're coming. No, tonight. tonight. Yeah, we don't get them in Alpine. And then so. we got Jackson in the studio. He's already got his bucket. He's already been collecting candy. What do you got in there, man? Yeah, what's in there? Sour Patch Kids, Sour yeah. Patch Kids, Watermelon, Swedish oh. Fish. Swedish Fish. I have a sneaky feeling those are your favorite. Uh, I do like them. Um... I had a funny <laughs> feeling. <laughs> there you go. What about you? Are you, uh, Joe? Are you? Yeah, I'm I come on. Keep, keep you going. Gonna trick I, or I, at, I? You're going to get trick or treaters <laughs> at your house? No, we have a big uh, celebration now. We have a resurgence in our neighborhood. You now, neighborhoods go, well, you, you might, yeah, you're old enough. The, um, you know, you go for a while, like, <laughs> uh, like we raised our kids and we knew all the parents that had kids. You knew that one crop of kids. And then for years, it seemed like about five or six years. There's no kids in the neighborhood, so you don't see anything. Oh. No Christmas lights. You don't see anything at Halloween. No, now got we got a again. resurgence. We got we got parents, families in the driveways with the fires going. Oh. Kids all over the place. So, yeah, it would be a big Halloween. So did you go buy all your candy for tonight? Somebody did, yeah. Somebody, Somebody did. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I don't know if we have any candy or anything. We were in uh, – I was in Vegas most of the week. Most Where are of you? The week. Yeah, what are you doing in Vegas? Uh, our 14th anniversary. Did you see – Brendan, he was there. He was in Vegas? No. Yeah. Somehow we missed that during our yeah. anniversary. He did his bachelorette party. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> See, you should have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds fun. We went to, man, you know, so look, <laughs> you know I like food, right? No, I would never. I know, thought. I know. Big shocker. Yeah. I'm actually a huge fan of spaghetti, and you guys are going to, you're going to be baffled, but I'm telling you right now, there's nothing to eat. This is not going to surprise you. There's nothing on the menu at Denny's to eat. Nothing. There's not one thing. The I Grand don't like Slam. one single thing. They I don't like that all day. I don't like it. 24 except, hours. Except spaghetti. Their spaghetti is delicious. Their spaghetti at Denny's is delicious. So we're we're at uh, we're in Vegas. We're looking for a place to eat, and Vegas is kind of weird. I think it's still suffering from COVID because there's a lot that's shut down, and there are weird hours on different restaurants. So we go to Denny's in Vegas. Wasn't this your anniversary? No, not on our anniversary. On our anniversary, we went to a nice steakhouse. Went to Craft Steak. Say, you don't me. take her to just because <laughs> you have cats. No, no, no. Doesn't mean you take her to Denny's. No, even Jackson knows better than that. He's just oh. he's laughing at me. He's like, that's not how you that's not how you do it. I went there just for the spaghetti. They were out of spaghetti. <gasps> We sit down and they're like, "Sorry, we're out of the fish and we're out of spaghetti." Oh, you had to be heartbroken. I'm like, "What? Well, you just had a run on fish and spaghetti at Denny's in Vegas? Like, what? Does anybody here have like you know 39 cents? Can't you just run down to 7-Eleven and grab some spaghetti for yeah, me? I mean, throw what? it in a pot. Couldn't believe it. Throw the ketchup in there. Come on. Well, see, this is a good data point though because that that pizza place in Santee that I haven't been to yet yeah. that you said has fantastic spaghetti. So now, let's see. Okay, so it's fantastic mm -hmm. spaghetti that tastes like it tastes so, at Denny's. So here's what happened. I went to Denny's, and there's nothing on the menu that I like. Nothing. Uh, moon over 
My hammy, according to Brittany. It's it's like hard to screw up breakfast food, and Denny's screws up breakfast food. There's just nothing I like. So I order their spaghetti. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is really good. So that kicked off a search. I thought, you know what? I think I think people are slacking on spaghetti. So I start going around to Italian restaurants in San Diego, and sure enough, they're all ignoring their spaghetti. And I'm like, you know, Denny's is – Kicking butt on spaghetti here, and all these like fancy uh, uh, Italian places across the they have good lasagna, they have other good pasta. They're totally dropping the ball on the spaghetti. So it was the it was how good the Denny's spaghetti was that made me go find that place in Santee that has delicious spaghetti. And you found it. I'm gonna have to go now. (laughs) Well, this is a weird gun show. It's totally. (laughs) Hey, it's all about. We'll get the we'll get the guns. It's all about spaghetti. I'm telling you though, but it was weird. Vegas was kind of weird. We I, we did this. Uh, they had a Van Gogh exhibit where they animated Van Gogh, uh, his, some of his work and stuff. That was actually really cool. Um, so I told. How long uh, were you there? We we're just there for like three days. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I told everybody that you know, uh, we checked out the Van Gogh exhibit. So now I can say I Van went. Well, did, did you go to the car car Van museum? Went. No, Van went. That's all I get from the Van went. <laughs> and we already heard it though. Right yeah, into the cars. Yeah, no, see. but I went to the boneyard, the neon sign boneyard. Oh, did you? But we went in the daytime. That was probably oh, a mistake. I recommend you go at night because that's when neon okay. is neon. I have an Italian restaurant you have to try out. I'll try it. They're closed on Monday. Bon Giovanni's. They're all yeah, I've been there. Old I've Highway been, 80. Up in uh, close to Alpine, right? Yeah. I'll, ch- I'll go check out their go spaghetti. Go check out their spaghetti. And, uh, but listen, if you're an Italian place, and I, I, I'm not even going to mention some of the finer Italian places. Does it have Italian to have a places. meatball? No, I, I would make it however, you know, but but there if you're an Italian place in San Diego, I'm telling you, I'm I've checked you out probably, and you're dropping the ball on spaghetti. Denny's has taken over. Um you're you know, I'm stopping there tonight on the way home. I'm gonna get me some spaghetti. See and what, I'm gonna tell Joe, the owner, what you said. Tell him. Yeah, well listen, I haven't been I'm not talking about that place specifically. No, 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 right, but I'm gonna tell him you're coming. But I'm I'm coming. Well, I'm glad you and, brought that back. And hell to, is uh, coming with me. <laughs> Jackson, do you That's like spaghetti? Okay, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah, do you like spaghetti, Jackson? I've never had spaghetti. Oh, really? All right. Well, what kind of parents do you have that you've never had spaghetti? Well, don't try. Don't first if you're if you want a first time if you want a really good first time spaghetti experience, check out Denny's. Have you ever had, you never had spaghettios <laughs> in the can? Nope. <laughs> Chef Boy RD. Is that even no. Right? No. See, I'm glad that you at least came back to spaghetti because we can go with the spaghetti westerns and segue right into guns at some point. <laughs> Are we going to go there? <laughs> anyway. Have you ever had SpaghettiOs? Have that, I had SpaghettiOs? That's closer than SpaghettiOs. Come on. You like that? <laughs> I went to college. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, that's how you got I've through had, college. I've, yeah, I've had, uh, that spa- I've, I've had ramen. I've had spaghetti in all its forms. Ramen with ketchup, <laughs> SpaghettiOs, <laughs> actual spaghetti. And then spaghetti. And then, yeah, you know. <laughs> so you don't even care if it has a meatball, huh? I don't. Hey, you know what? We're actually, we got like one more minute. Here, I got it. Rich is going to smack me if I don't talk about this. So we have this really, really cool Magnum event coming up. It's an interview on November 11th. Uh, that's a, I believe that's a Thursday, November 11th in the afternoon with Jack Wilson. And you'll remember Jack Wilson. He was the guy. He was in the... Uh, the church yeah. uh, shooting in uh, in Texas, and he stopped it. He stopped right. it. Unfortunately, there was at least one victim. I, I, there may have been two, but uh, he made this an am- amazing, amazing defensive gun uh, uh, shot. And he in, was very calm, church. cool, and collected. This guy is such a stud. I can't wait to talk to him. I know. He was so. It is, it is a Thursday. Yeah, it's a Thursday. So Jack Wilson, November 11th, that's Thursday in the afternoon. We're going to interview him. We're going to talk all about him and, and the incident and everything that's happened since, which I'm very interested in. And then we're going to have a uh, Q&A. We're going to let people uh, talk to Jack and uh, you know, let him talk about uh, – ask whatever question you want, really. But wow. this is a very cool Gun Owners Radio uh, event. Um, Are you going to re-air it on mm-hmm. Sunday? Uh, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we'll, we'll put it up. You'll be able to watch it after the fact. Okay. But you want to participate with this thing live. You want to come live on mm-hmm. November 11th. Uh, we'll, there'll be instructions on the website on how to how to tune in, and you'll be able to ask him questions as well. But we're really, really looking forward to it. Can't you move it to what? Some other day? No, I'll be in Moab. Uh, what, well, really? In a jeep? Really? What yeah. kind of? Which now? No, that's now we got a whole other. The, we got to go to commercial. Though. The new Cherokee. The new Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> I saw it out there. Uh, that's the Grand. 
Yeah? This will be the crawler. So we're going to go to Maya for three days. A Cherokee crawler? Well, we'll see. I'll give you all the uh, scoop. Sounds delicious. And, I if I, and once I get one in town, That's I'll put you bad. in and see if that'll beat okay. out that Ford Bronco. Yeah, well, good luck with that. All right. All right, folks. Hey, welcome back to Gun Owners Radio. FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. Oh, nuts. Yes, no. That's all right. We'll get you next time. All right. Go so, get him, Joe. Freedom Warrior of the Fiercest Order is next. District 5 County Supervisor Jim Desmond. Wow, the Freedom Warrior, huh? Wow. Yeah, I don't write them. I just read it. I'm telling you. Hey, but self-defense and emergencies can happen to anyone, and there is no guarantee that the justice system will be on your side. Make sure you are protected for your legal battles after your self-defense battle. While you protect your family and property, U.S. Law Shield is here to defend you 24-7, 365 days a year with comprehensive self-defense coverage at an affordable price. Bad guys don't take days off, and neither does our coverage. Listeners get a free T-shirt when you use promo code GUNOWNERSRADIO. So sign up today. Go to uslawshield.com. I just got this uh, message from uh, from our friend Jame Jame. Jame Jame does our website, and she says that uh, if Denny's isn't our, a sponsor by the end of this segment, that there's something seriously wrong. I think you're after because now she wants spaghetti. That's how that's how good a job I did describing their delicious. Denny's spaghetti. isn't going to sponsor us when they only have. Your one item, and I know they, I was gonna they say. don't have it in stock. <laughs> Jamie might have missed the first part of I that, where I did. said there's absolutely nothing on the menu to eat, <laughs> that they even screw up breakfast food. Whatever. You know what, Danny? Call us. We'll work it out. Okay. Um, so our first uh, interview here is somebody I, I like very much. Well, really, let's see really if good he guy. likes Denny's spaghetti. We'll ask him. I think there's a, a Denny's <laughs> in San Marcos. I don't know. Uh, but it's Supervisor Jim Desmond. How are you, sir? Hey, Michael, I'm doing well. I'm uh, enjoying, uh, I guess, the hours before Halloween. Yeah, nice. Well, let me ask you, before we go any further, we just had, did a little segment here. Are you a fan of, of spaghetti at Denny's, by chance, Jim? You know, moons over my hammy is my ah! at Denny's. <laughs> that might be our new, we might have to just ask, that's our new standard question in any interview. What's your favorite thing at Denny's? That's my co-host's favorite. She texted me. She goes, no, moon's over man. Oh, my God. <laughs> so for yeah. those who, who yeah. don't know, if you've been living under a rock for the past year, year and a half, Jim Desmond is uh, the county supervisor. Um, the county, how do I describe, Jim, this is how I describe uh, to people who don't really know what the board of supervisors does. I tell them it's like the city council, but for the county. Is that, is that a pretty good explanation? Yeah, that's that's pretty close. Yeah, and we do everything the cities don't want to do. So we we deal that's with a lot. all the kind of un, un, unfortunately health issues and social ills, and you know courts and jails and and uh, public defenders and and uh, vote, register our voters, all those type of things that I guess encompass all the cities is what the uh, the county does. And you've been extremely busy over. The, I mean, normally it it it's especially in San Diego. It's a pretty well. The county is a pretty well-oiled machine. I mean, um, the the roads are better than most of the cities. Um, the budget's usually balanced. It's only really been the last couple of years, um, and especially during COVID, you guys had a lot on your plate, right? I mean, it's been a it's been an extremely challenging year and a half. Oh, absolutely, and and nobody nobody even knew what a county supervisor was. I I don't think it was very you know very limited uh, you know because things were going well. Things you know things were running, and like you said, we balance of budget and and you know things that people care about we're just kind of taken care of and and uh but no this covid thing and nobody warned me there was going to be a pandemic when i ran for this office but, uh, <laughs> they should the, uh, they should they should warn you they should say something about that they should have yeah say hey coming up soon uh but the um well you know the pandemic just threw a you know kind of a a wrench in, in the gears and and uh in the county is where the county health and health department is is run by the county and so you know when the zika virus and things like that came out before you know it was the county kind of taking care of it and wasn't as front and center as as it has been with uh with covid here and you know nothing's really lasted this long before so it's you know come to the attention which is good you know people that should understand government and what's going on and what the representatives do for them or don't do for them uh, for those t- those matters, but um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, been, it's, it's, it's been a very it, busy. It's year. too bad it took a pandemic for people to take a civics lesson, but I guess you're right. It, it is you know, it's good that people finally know what's going on. 
uh, as far yeah, as yeah. The, the county. But uh, so let's I want to talk more about uh, covid and uh, some of the challenges in the next segment. But I really want to talk about you, you had a really interesting um, uh, path to to your current position. I want to talk a little bit about it. I first uh, you and I first started uh, or got to know each other and started talking when you were the mayor of, of San Marcos. Um, but yeah. what what yeah. got you into politics? Just volunteering, you know, is, is really kind of what, what got me there. I, you know, I started out, my kids were uh, at kids' elementary school. They needed some people on the parent-teacher organization. So I said, okay, I'll do it. And I stepped up, and they made me the president. And I had 12 moms that did everything, and, and I ran the meetings. And and, uh, and then, you know, I, I got, had a business in town, so I, 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 I got on the Chamber of Commerce, volunteered on that board. Uh, that was on the Economic Development Commission, and then to just kind of, what I found out in life is the more you volunteer, the more responsibility people will give you. <laughs> and so I just kept volunteering, and, and uh, I'll do the job if people will have me. And, you know, if not, that's that's okay, too. But uh, uh, so it's really – it was a path of volunteering, and, and uh, it still you know, pretty much still is. Now, I didn't know what, – what business did you run or what type of business did you did you have? Well, it, it, you know, I was an airline pilot for yeah. 33 years is what I was for Delta. But I, I had a wet engineering degree when I got hired by Delta. And so I started an engineering company in the 90s. And, and we kind of followed the, the dot-com uh, boom and era and things like that. And then 2001, the dot-com era sank. And and, or the, and so, uh, so so did my, my little company. But uh, we, we did technical writing. We You know, for all those um, – you know, gadgets and, and things that you bought in the 90s, the tech, uh, tech stuff, all came with a little manual. And somebody had to write those manuals. And so I had a team of people that we kind of went into, you know, I had Sony, I had Motorola contracts with AT&T and things like that to where – so they didn't have to have a technical writing staff on hand. We did that for them. And, and um, so it was kind of a – it was a nice little side gig and, and uh, kept me busy and – and uh, had, like I said, up to 35 employees. And so we did pretty well for about seven or eight years. And then the economy tanked. And so uh, I went back to I, I went back to flying airplanes and then I got involved with politics. Nice. So you 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 were you not a, you, you, didn't, you weren't a pilot for those seven years or were you, were you kind of doing no, both? I was. I was. I was doing both. The same thing with the mayor. I was, uh, you know, I kind of managed and got, the, got it running, and then I hired somebody to run the company, and, mm. and I was kind of the head cheerleader and, and you know, getting getting contracts and stuff like that, but I didn't – I hired somebody else to do the day-to-day operations, and uh, so, now, I mean, flying – the flying gig was great. It was only – you know, I flew 12 or 14 days a month, and I'm home, home the rest. That's how I was able to, you know, do the mayor job at the same time, uh, but county supervisors, they That's full-time, full-time, full-time. Yeah. Full-time job, yeah. So uh, I uh, retired um, a little over a year ago. Do you miss uh, it? Do you I miss flying? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of weird. I don't even want to go near an airport here lately just with so much COVID stuff and restrictions. Um, but, but, yeah, I used you know, lunch in Miami, dinner in New York, and then off to Dublin. You know, <laughs> it, it, was a, it was really a cool job. All right. Uh, well, but, hey, uh, I got to th- yeah. throw a plug out there for you, Jim. Because I okay, travel, well, okay. I travel a lot with the auto industry, and, uh-huh. and my primary airline is Delta. Because nobody, oh, well, good. nobody treats you better. The stewardesses, the captain, you've got a television set on every plane. I mean, you really, you guys really, really knock it out of the park for customer service. And you land better than anybody else because I've been stuck on a couple other ones. We must be hurting for sponsors. First you Denny's, think? now Delta. We're going big, man. Hey, have you been in Delta lately? <laughs> How's their spaghetti? Uh, uh, they don't no. do spaghetti. Oh, well, uh, that's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They love to fly in at shows, I believe, right? Yeah. Isn't that Delta? They love to fly in at shows? Uh, no? No. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, anyway. I, I, we get you there. That used to be Western. I, I, you know, I don't even remember. We, we've we gone through so many slogans. I can't Oh, remember. my gosh, yeah. But hey, somebody somebody told me the salmon is really good at Denny. Denny, <laughs> not to keep going back there. But uh, <laughs> somebody told me. They were me out that. of the salmon that night, too. We went there. They were out of the spaghetti and the salmon. That was the other thing they were out of. And this like, is where he takes his wife for their anniversary. Well, Can you believe that? <laughs> I mean, it was uh, it was only our fourteenth, fifteenth. We'll oh, go. I see. Oh, you're just going to keep digging deeper Fifth, and yeah, deeper. Fifteenth, we'll go to In and Out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, yes, and In and Out is the place to visit now. Yeah, That's really, cool. no kidding. So, yeah, what made us? So were you on the city council first, and then went to mayor, or how did all that happen? Yes. Well, I was on the planning commission. You know, I started on that economic development commission because I had the business in town, and, and I was trying to 
you know, um, uh, counter, you know, interact with other business leaders. And, and um, so then somebody just asked me, hey, you want to run for council? I was like, oh, sure. And uh, so I ran for city council. And at the time, we were fighting over Walmarts and cement plants and stuff like that. Hmm. And yet we had these we had the university, Cal State University of San Marcos. We had Palomar College, we had University of St. Augustine. We were a college town and, and didn't really act like it or know it. So uh, that's so I so I was so I was on the city council actually for only two years. Uh, had some hubris and ran for uh, uh, mayor uh, in the, my first middle of my first term of city council and and um, and and I won that and I was mayor for twelve years and then uh, after being mayor for twelve years, um, Bill Horn was termed out as yeah. the county supervisor representing North County and so he. Uh, I was termed out, and I was termed out, and and so I said, "Well, I'll keep I'll keep going if people will have me." And I'll, you know, I try to do just a common sense. I, I equate a lot. With, well, I don't know how much time you have here, but I keep going. Equate Plenty a lot time. to fly to flying and government, or running government. I mean, flying the airplane. Safety is number one. Okay, so police and fire departments, and, and you know, are number one in the city. So safety is number one. Number two is proper management of your resources. So the, in the airplane, it's your fuel, number one, and you never run it on fumes or land on empty. And and you you know your resources of air traffic control and the weather and the flight attendants and the crew and the you know all the systems of the airplane are the resources where you know is running a city or government is taxes and dollars and, and grants and, and all, all those types of resources. So if you properly manage those, the third step is quality of life. Is if, mm. if you get the first two right, quality of life is you know is bound to happen. And and you know parks, roads, uh, and things like that. Uh, parks and you know, trails and things like that for quality of life, and then you know smooth landings and, and smooth air is kind of the quality of life. So or quality of flying. So I qu- equate a lot what I do or did when I was you know captain of the airplane and, and managing all of that to this you know to politics. It's sa- safety is number one, proper management of resources and quality of life. Well, same, you did such a good stuff. job that, and I want to talk about this in the next segment, that San Diego County Gun Owners uh, honored you with an award at our at our annual gala. And I want to talk a little bit about that and talk how about how hard it is uh, or how hard it was and probably still is uh, as far as COVID goes. But we got to do that after the after the break. So we need to get Biden a pilot license? Is that what they're talking oh, that's the story we got here? <laughs> Do do kamikaze pilots need a license? Oh, never. All right, folks. Welcome back to Gun Owners Radio. FM 96.1. AM 1170. The answer. Come on, Mike. Get with the program, will you? Yeah. Your producer here is telling you you're next. (laughs) I'm going to get notes. I'm telling you. I hate to say it. Hey, folks. Our freedom of speech is just as important as our freedom of self-defense. We are so thrilled to support an American company like MyPillow. Go to MyPillow.com and use the promo code FREEMARKET3. What do you get? 66% off America's best pillow. You can get a great night's sleep and enjoy the satisfaction of supporting companies fighting against cancel culture. That's MyPillow.com and use the promo code FREEMARKET3 for up to 66% off. All right, back to Mr. Jim Desmond. County Loves Board of Supervisors, yep. Moons over Miami. <laughs> well, that makes sense for a, for a pilot to uh, to like moons over Miami. I, I think so too. <laughs> so, Jim, uh, the first time you and I spoke uh, was about an issue in San Marcos. Called up and said, "Hey, some of the gun shops are having issues with uh, with City Hall." Um, you were extremely uh, attentive and uh, uh, generous with your time, and you listened. And you solved the problem in in a manner that was best for everyone. I was extremely impressed. Um, you didn't have to take my phone call. You didn't have to listen, um, but you did, and you solved the problem. And that was the beginning of a uh, of a of of a number of different things that that we've put before you. And you've always always uh, uh, done the right thing. Done you know what makes sense, and and you're not shy about it. You don't you know a lot of politicians that I talk to, a lot of candidates, politicians. Um, they kind of, uh, you know, gee, I don't, I don't really want to talk about what I believe in. I, I, you know, I'm afraid I'll, I'll hurt somebody's feelings, and then, gee, I don't know what I'll do. And that's never been you. You've always said, hey, this is what I believe. This is who I am. Um, you know, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what's best for people. And, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, the San Diego County Gun Owners at our Second Amendment celebration dinner this year gave you elected of the year, and I'm, I was really, really honored and proud that 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 you uh, that you got that, and I I, I hope that you uh, I hope that you were honored by by receiving it. Well, 
absolutely. Absolutely. And I've always been a you know, proud Second Amendment supporter and, you know, people's rights, uh, you know, to protect themselves. And, and uh, you know, so I've, I've always had, you know, kept that and, and I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid to put that out there and, and uh, say that, you know, people have those freedoms. It's, it's in our Constitution. And, and uh, so, it, you know, Second Amendment and, and uh, like it or not, you know, this is the way it is. And, and uh, this is how we're going to conduct ourselves. And, and, you know, I want everybody to be as safe as they possibly can, but still we've, we've got rights. And, and uh, somebody told me, I remember reading once is, you know, the, you know, rights come with responsibilities mm. and, and the first responsibility is to protect the right. And so uh, I, you know, I've, I've never been, like you said, I've never been shy about that. And I do remember our first encounter and, and it was, you know, it was pleasant and we, we got things worked out and, and it was able, you know, it was a win-win for everybody and a win for the taxpayers, a win for the, uh, um, for the gun shops and San Marcos. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. And we, we, you know, had to keep carrying on. And we also had uh, North County, here's another sponsor, North County uh, shooting range uh, in, in San Marcos opened up. There was a little bit of controversy, but, we got that through. They're, they're a business like anybody else, and they got to. They have rights to uh, put their businesses um, in commercial areas, and and we weren't going to take any grief over it. Yeah, you did an excellent job. You continue to do an excellent job. So COVID happened, and immediately your colleague uh, Nathan Fletcher. I mean, within a within within Minutes. like a week. I mean, it was within a week. Uh, he came out and irresponsibly and ill informed uh, said, "Oh nope, gun shops need to shut down," and. Uh, <laughs> We we I you know we made phone calls and 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 your office and the sheriff's office you guys were extremely helpful in saying no that's that's not what's going to happen and that he he why don't you tell the story a little bit I don't want to I don't want to well, well, misspeak here well so much has happened between now and then I'm going to try to re- try to remember as best <laughs> I can but yeah it was it was it was crazy you know that what marijuana shops cannabis shops could be could be open but but gun shops couldn't be. And and it was it was just ridiculous and and uh, you know it, it kind of shows that pressure works sometimes because Gavin you know the governor finally came you know he came around fairly quickly after after you know enough people said hey this is not right and uh, allowing gun shops you know uh, to be essential and and um, so we, yeah there was it was I think uh, overstepping that absolutely you know um, the the bounds of you know uh, of freedom. Uh, during that of that time, and and I was glad that you know Michael, you and the uh, San Diego County gun owners, and and many other you know uh, gun organizations, uh, freedom organizations throughout the state said, no, this is not right. The you know they should be allowed to open, and and they, you got them back opened up. I think it was in a matter of matter of a couple of weeks, which was pretty darn quick. I, well, yeah, no, they never even closed. They, yeah, they didn't even close. Oh, it was true? great. Okay, yeah, good, good. We they were right on the edge. I mean, they were truly people were afraid. I mean, there were so many businesses and. And venues and organizations, uh, they were af- af- afraid of being shut down, not just temporarily, but permanently. There were people that, you know, hey, they're going to pull my state license to, you know, whatever, sell alcohol if I'm a restaurant or, you know, yeah. sell fire. It was it was crazy. So talk a little bit about that because, you know, they're really – and I talked about this in, in my uh, – at the dinner, um, that there was very little leadership in San Diego from elected officials – uh, you were one of the few exceptions, um, and and you stood up and said, "Hey, you know what? This is wrong. This is right. You know, whatever. We're not going to stand for this." Uh, you were very informative. Um, I, I remember, you know, you you came out with statistics and and really uh, stood up for, uh, you know, uh, for what was right. And I really appreciate that. Can you talk a little bit about you know the struggles that you went through trying to fight back against some of the ridiculousness that came about because of COVID? Yeah, well, early on, you know, I think it was the, towards the end of April, you know, when they told us it was only going to be two weeks and, and you know, it was flat in the curve and all that kind of stuff. And, and I think it was towards the end of April. I says, OK, let's come up with a plan to reopen. Let's come up with a plan at least to start, you know, get, getting businesses opened up again. I think there was, you know, like car dealerships and, and you know, furniture showrooms, those big kind of open space areas. Uh, let's start to open those back up again. And, and uh, I got shut down by the board. It was uh, three to two that myself and Kristen Gaspar, mm-hmm. you know, were pushing for that, and and then, you know, it, it, then it's, all these sectors couldn't couldn't weren't allowed to be open. And to me, it, it wasn't their their rights to be open and sh- and prove they could be safe was taken away from them. You know, it was just deemed certain businesses were safe. Well, they, you know, the governor wouldn't even allow certain sectors of business to be open and and to operate safely. So. 
I was always trying to push for that, you know, the, as far as let's give everybody the same opportunity. And, and if, if, and if the public chooses not to go there, then don't go there. It, it's, it, uh, you know, I, it was just, and then they, you know, I'll come up with numbers during COVID. They would say, well, whatever, 20,000 people in San Diego County have, have uh, tested positive for the virus, which was absolutely true. But what they weren't giving out at the time was that is, you know, 80% of those numbers or whatever it was, it was a large percent had already gone through the 14 day incubation period and cycle or whatever it was, or had been let go out of the hospital. So they were only giving you the cumulative numbers of how many people tested positive. And it didn't mean that many people were out running around positive Hmm. because a lot of people had uh, had gone through it or or, or were out of it. Same thing with hospitalization. They would give you the total number of hospitalizations, but they wouldn't tell you how many people were released from the hospital. So I went at both sides, and and that I, is I started doing videos and started doing you know putting out that kind of information to where hey you know not a, it's no need to have your hair on fire, folks. We can manage this and we can control it. And even now, I think the emergency is over. We should be, go beyond the emergency and and get on with our lives. We got to learn to live with this thing. Uh, it, we're not going to eradicate it, and and we we got to get back to, to as normal as we can, but protect the most vulnerable. So what do you what, is, what do you think their motivation was? I mean, you know. Do you, do you think they were? I don't know. What do you think their motivation was for doing all this, for going power overboard? And and well, got power and and looking like they were doing something, yeah. like this mask stuff. You know, these, these masks that don't fit tightly on your face are, are just worthless. You know, it, it, they're not the surgical masks that are right up against. It. And most of us, you know, don't even wear them properly. So this mask stuff, to me, is just government trying to say, well, look, we told you so, and look, things are getting better. It's, well, it's not because of the mask. I, I just think government wanted to look like it was doing something and, and, uh, and, and power. I mean, it was absolutely power with Gavin and he in his little <laughs> w- spin the wheel and, and give out money for vaccinations. Uh, that that was just craziness. And, it did. And, uh, it really. It did feel like. Uh, it, it did feel like that that they wanted to do something. They wanted to make sure that they weren't going to get blamed. You know, if it if it got worse or whatever. Um, but but then it it just kind of got it turned into like. I don't know. It turned into like dogma. Like it just it turned into like this this this. Uh, you know, religious thing, you know, lines were drawn and you were either on the left side or the right side of the lines. And then things just got nasty and you couldn't, you couldn't even, you know, all reason and logic just went out the window. And it, 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 but it seemed like it started out as a real true, you know, Hey, we really want to do something good. But then it like, like so often uh, their good intentions just led to uh, a big, huge mess, an enormous mess. Yeah. Well, and even with the vaccinations, I mean, 80, per, 80 to 85 percent of the people are vaccinated in San Diego County. You're not going to get any better than that. I mean, you know, let's let's get over this is, is you know, to get that many people to agree to anything is, is uh, uh, you know, a, a feat in and above itself. And and now to get to 100 percent or anything like that is is just is craziness. And 85 percent. Like, OK, so there's like three and a half million people in San Diego County, right? Yes. So 85 percent. Well, Eighty-five percent of the three and a half million. Let me. uh, I got. I got to requantify. About three weeks ago, eighty percent. I know it was eighty percent of the people in San Diego County had gotten fully vaccinated. Men, women, and and children, all ages. mm, Those that were qualified, not all ages. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that makes more. I was was going to say, wow, holy cow. Because it wasn't approved for whatever sixteen and under, but eighty percent of everybody sixteen and older had had been fully vaccinated. Ninety percent of that same number had at least one vaccination. Hmm. So, so I'm, I'm just kind of you know guessing into the future here. It's probably about eighty five percent, but I know for a fact three weeks ago it was eighty percent of those eligible for vaccinations got them in San Diego County. I mean so, that's huge. Why is I mean, anything closed? Why is anything? Why are there any restrictions? Why is anything closed at that at this point? If- I. Or why are we still wearing masks? Or what? You know, I, I, I don't, I don't get it. So I don't. To be honest, I don't even know what's still closed. I, don't, I think most things are open at this point in time. Well, I guess but, that's you true. Know, the, I can't really think of any. Rest- are, are there any restrictions, Joe? Are there? Any, can you think of any restrictions? For- yeah. Wait, wait. There's some on, ch- on churches still, like the number of people indoors. There's some of those restrictions. Still. I know. Oh, you know what? I know that there's like our dinner. We had to cap it at, at 999 people. Because if, you, yeah. if it was a thousand or more, we had to show like vaccines or whatever. So we had uh, we only. So I assure you, Jim, we only had nine hundred ninety nine people. 
I, I, I absolutely agree. I counted. I, no, I, <laughs> no, no I'm sure you did. Wasn't there. Hey, can but, you uh, say, Jim, I got a, I got a special little guy here. Uh, his name's Jackson. He's here in the studio with me and with his service dog, Chase. And they have how a, old is he? They have oh. a, yeah, how old are you? Jack, eight. Eight years old. He's our new our newest co-host. I was just wondering if you could, if you could just say hello to Jackson, Jim. Jackson, hey, hello. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well, Jackson. What? What? You have your a service dog. What's your dog's name? Chase. Chase. Oh. Yeah, and Chase has Does like he what? Ch- he has like twenty thousand followers or something like that on on Instagram, right? <laughs> hey, he right. just got a chase. Oh, he just got a chase sticker on a dwarf car out at Barona Speedway. Yeah, thanks to Brittany. So Brittany oh, was nice. Gosh. Yeah. So he's he's a very popular dog. Yeah. Oh well, that's great. That's great. Well, I, is, is he going to be taking over that? What What is he like at Denny's? Yeah, what's what does Jackson like at Denny's? <laughs> Definitely their pancakes. <laughs> there you go. That's an awesome All answer. Right. All right. And All Michael right. doesn't Everybody. even like their pancakes. I don't even like their pancakes. I'm very, very You and your spaghetti. Jim, thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for everything you're doing, and uh, congratulations on your award. And uh, keep, well, up, keep up the great work. Thank you very much. I'm very honored with the award, and, and it's sitting on my desk right now. So I, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All, all you've done, Michael, all, as well. And, and you do it here with this show and, and uh, you know, for freedom-loving uh, Americans and San Diegans especially. Thank all right. you. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Can't wait well, to see you, know. Governor. Oh, go ahead, Joe. I tell you. Um, <laughs> Alec Baldwin on the uh, movie set. Did he make a mistake or are we making a mistake? Well, we'll find out. Don't touch that dial. Hey, did you know law-abiding gun shops and manufacturers have had their credit card processing shut down because the vendors think guns are inappropriate? Well, shutting down businesses that support your constitutional right to self-defense is wrong, which is why we are so excited to have 365 Glacier Payments as a 10-ring partner. 365 Glacier Payments specializes in companies in the firearms industry. So if you have a business that accepts credit cards, give them a call today to see if you can enjoy the peace of mind that your account won't be shut down. And also enjoy the best rates. Visit their website, 365glacierpayments.com, and for a free account review, if they can't beat your credit card processing rate, they'll pay you $100. All right, who's going to lead off this topic? I'm going to kick it off. We're going to talk about... uh uh, Alec Baldwin. Everybody heard about, of course, what happened. Um, we were actually at a San Diego County Gun Owners meeting when, when the news broke and everyone started talking about it down south. Mm-hmm. And I thought we'd take just a little portion of the show. I want to I want to talk a little bit about the a couple of the interviews and some of the headlines. Uh, maybe set some context, and set then in the, the next, stage. yeah, and then in the next uh, segment, Joe's going to talk about um, some writing that he did about it. But uh, you know, I, I think that we're. Uh, and I think it'll be a, a good little addition to the show or a good little discussion. How are we doing with the show so far, Jackson? Is it interesting? Yep. All right, good. So the uh, as everybody knows, Alec Baldwin uh, was uh, uh, shooting a movie. <laughs> right. no, no pun intended. Yeah. Right, yeah. right off the bat. Right, right off the bat. Have a serious discussion here. Dude. I'm telling you. He was filming a movie, and um, there was an incident that occurred where he uh, shot a, a gun with live ammunition, um, it hit two people, and one of them tragically and unfortunately died. She didn't survive, and that's uh, horrible and sad. Um, I did a couple of interviews, KUSI and, and some of the other stations, yep. uh, to talk about, uh, you know, uh, mainly they wanted to know what, what is a prop gun um, because they kept referring to it as a prop gun, thinking that it was something other than a, an actual firearm, which it wasn't. It's an actual live firearm. They were using it as a prop, but it's a firearm. And in my interview, I took the opportunity to, you know, list off the four universal rules, you know, treat every gun as if it's loaded, don't point a gun at anything you're not willing to destroy, finger off the trigger till you're ready to shoot, know your target and what's beyond. And I thought it was an important thing to talk about um, and, you know, just a good opportunity to get that out there, especially in the 6 o'clock news uh, cycle, you know, that maybe doesn't normally get a, a firearms perspective. I thought, hey, let's let's get that out there. Um, however, if you look at some of the other, I think we're, we're messing this up. We, the, the gun world, are, are messing this up. Uh, and it's it, it appears to be because Alec Baldwin's been such a jerk to gun owners. And I'm not here to defend. Not, not Al- just gun owners. Huh? It, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm not here to defend Alec Baldwin. Don't particularly, I don't know him personally, but I don't agree with his um, the, the uh, opinions he's had. I'm not really a big fan of his movies. Um, I don't like the way he uh, he wasn't treats in Red people. Dawn. No, he was not in Red Dawn. He was okay. in Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice was actually not that bad. Um, but uh, you know, I'm not here defending Alec Baldwin. Well, what I am saying is that people are lashing out at him either because they don't understand the situation or simply because they don't like him. And I don't think that makes us look good either way. No, I agree. We're either ill-informed or we're mean, and neither one is is good. Um, and of course, I'm 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 breaking that down to a very basic level, but the idea that he shouldn't have been pointing a gun at somebody, you know, people on movie sets are paid to break those four rules. They're they're supposed to break those four rules. They're they they point guns at people. There hasn't been any report, uh, at least no credible report, that he was doing anything irresponsibly. He wasn't messing around on the set or uh, playing or doing anything that he wasn't supposed to be doing. It sounded like what he what he was handed what was he was told a gun with blanks. Um, it sounds like he pointed it at the camera as he was supposed to, and then the live ammunition that was inside the the uh, the gun that shouldn't have been there, um, unfortunately created a, a horrible tragic accident. Um, on a movie set that happened, other than the live ammunition part, uh, the idea of people using actual firearms and pointing them at each other and pointing them at cameras happens. Um, it happens all the time, and uh, it's it's not unusual, and it's it's frankly uh, dangerous uh, in the sense that yeah, it's a this is a lethal uh, you know tool potentially, but that's why they hire professionals and follow very very strict rules, and it sounds like the professionals that they hired um, are going to be in big trouble because they they didn't follow the rules, they certainly didn't enforce the rules. Uh, the head armorer sounds like she was dangerously inexperienced. Um, it sounds like uh, uh, she really didn't do her job. She, even in her statement, she was claiming, hey, I, I tried to do more safety stuff, and uh, they didn't want to do it. Well, <laughs> you're the head armor. You don't, they don't get to decide how safe they, they, they uh, should be. So even in my opinion, uh, even her statement was, was damaging. But the idea that, uh, you know, I'm seeing memes and statements and whatever, the idea that, uh, you know, Alec Baldwin should have taken an NRA safety class and he wouldn't have been pointing a gun at somebody is ludicrous. That, that he was on a movie set. You know, that's, what there was, that's why they have a head armor. That's why they have these safety precautions in place um, because that's what they do. Now, if you want to make the argument that, hey, why don't they just get airsoft guns or very realistic guns and replace, uh, you know, live, am- live, live firearms? Okay, fine. That's a discussion to have. But you know, attacking him because you don't like him. And years ago, back when who was the vice president that accidentally shot somebody? Cheney. Cheney accidentally shot somebody while he was uh, with a shotgun. With a shotgun while he was hunting, and Alec ba- Baldwin, you know, said some snarky comments towards him. Okay, that was disgusting too. And acting the same way that Alec Baldwin acted towards him is equally as disgusting. So if there are people out there that are saying, hey, this is our opportunity to attack somebody we disagree with, I think that that's the wrong – The wrong. it's, it's, it's wrong. Welcome, I, I, welcome to social media. Well, welcome to social media. I agree. But um, it's, it's starting to take over the gun world. Like that's starting to be the narrative that somehow people on movies you know, shouldn't be – uh, doing this when the reality is, uh, you know, it's, it's simply not true. There, you know, if this were Tom Selleck or you know Charlton Heston back when he was alive, I doubt we'd be treating him in the same manner. And I just don't think that's productive. It certainly doesn't uh, make us look like the good guys we are. And uh, again, it's either uh, people that that misunderstand the situation or people that are just simply trying to be mean. And we're the good guys. All the facts are on our side. When we start making things up and changing the narrative, that's when we, we stop being the respected good guys. And that's, I think that that's unfortunate. Um, am I off? What do you guys think? Yeah, since you're going to get the next two and a half hour segment on this. Yeah, topic, go ahead. My attitude is when you look deep into it, which I have, there were just many, many, many mistakes made. That if, if the protocols were put into place, like you always put a steel plate between the shooter and the camera because he was – what he was doing, he was doing a pre-shoot at the camera for a setup, um, and there was no steel plate to protect anybody in the event something was to come out, even if it was a, a gas or, or, powder, or gas or, or powder 
or a wad because it was okay. That was number one. Number two, um, the bottom line is it's it's just like what you said, and everybody I've seen that's been interviewed that was an armor says that the armor takes a gun, opens it up, makes sure there's absolutely no ammo in it, or if there is, it's the ammo that's supposed to be in it. Number two, then the ammo, the gun is handed to the person. That person is supposed to do the same thing. None of that happened. He relied on a st- he relied on a statement from somebody saying an it's, assistant director. Yeah, that it was hot. Well, and the other thing in her statement, she said, "I have no idea how live ammo got on the set." Well, and nobody that actually, does. That's actually worse. That makes well, her look worse. <clears throat> how, why did she not know how she, live ammo was on the set? You know exactly. Then they came out and said, "Well, some of the some of the staff were practice shooting at night. You know, the night before with this gun, and." They think that's possibly how it could happen. I mentioned this to to Joe. Live ammo should not be on a set. Period. He disagreed. Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I honestly don't know if live ammo. Why should would not you? Be on the why set. should it be on set? What, but I know. For what I know it shouldn't be um, in a gun, and the gun shouldn't be left unattended, and the armorer shouldn't know. But or this should armor, not know. this was her second. Assignment. Oh yeah, she sounds like it sounds like her career is over. Her I mean, first one, she didn't want to do to begin with. To be honest with you, she really didn't want to do it. She did it, but she had the support to where it was uh, but, was able to. But, but she the, well, I had the, no support the, on this. What and my main point is the personal attacks against Alec Baldwin Ridiculous. make us look petty and Ridiculous. silly and low yeah. class and I, come I, out of the swamp. Get yourself need, up we need to the be, high ground. We need to be the professionals. We need take to take the high the, ground. Exactly. The Alec Baldwin incident all over the news raises the question, blame will be assigned, but will responsibility be accepted? Let's talk about it with Joe Dramisi. But first, PRMI Mortgage, primeres.com slash Alpine. Are you in the military? Are you looking for help for a VA loan? And if you're looking to buy, refi, or if you're just considering a reverse mortgage, call our local mortgage guy that you can trust. Call Chris Wiley at PRMI Mortgage. For nearly 25 years, Chris has been helping local San Diegans with all their mortgage needs. Call Chris Wiley at 619-722-1303 or primeres.com slash alpine. All right, Joe. Hollywood and guns. All right. So back to the Alec Baldwin story. So, um, yeah, I wrote about this. I I took a different take. Um, You know, my purpose of uh, writing about this, and and you can find that on our blog page or on um, getagrip.substack.com. But um, my uh, purpose for writing it, I was looking more at the responsibility part. And the bigger problem, I think, in our society is we've, we seem to have lost the, um, I don't know what you would call it, the uh, ability or the character or whatever to, to accept responsibility for the things that we do. If um, you look at what happened, you know, and I'm not, my, my disclaimer in my article, right, I'm not, I'm not doing this to attack Alec Baldwin and I'm not trying to explain exactly what happened and I'm not being insensitive to, uh, you know, the people that were killed or injured. Um, but just taking a look at the, the reactions, uh, that you see from this thing. So, you know, obviously, and again, I wasn't there, I don't have all the facts. Um, and you can't, you can't really depend on what you read in the media. I mean, the the media is just, just horrible about covering things. Um, you know, what, and especially something that has to do with guns. I mean, a lot of stuff is inaccurate. This, uh, I think Michael mentioned in the last section, this, this over and over and over again, a prop gun, a prop gun, a prop gun. It's not a prop gun. It was a real gun. And, um, you know, things happened, and it, it just seems like that, um, you know, a number of people didn't do things that they should generally have done, and you had that tragic outcome. And, you know, when you talk about people like, um, for instance, you know, ultimately – um, in terms of responsibility, you know, Alec Baldwin was the one that took the gun. He pointed the gun at that person. He cocked the hammer back, and he pulled the trigger. This is not, you know, I mean, obviously he didn't intend to do to hurt anyone, but, I mean, that's, that's what happened. So if you're going to look at responsibility, I mean, he has to take that. I don't expect him to come out and say that at this point, but, but I mean, that's, that's kind of the thing that went on. But a number of people should have done a number of things. Um, if you look at, uh, there's, there's articles out there that I've linked to in my article, um, where other actors, veteran actors have said that that, that kind of thing never happens. An assistant director never hands an actor a gun, says it's cold, and then you just go with it. 
Um, they say it, it's standard practice on those movie sets. Uh, the armor or the prop master or someone will come up. They'll show the actor the gun is clear. They'll open it up. The actor will verify the gun is clear. The other actor that's going to get shot with the clear gun will verify that it's clear. And they always do that. Uh, if you think about, you know, Hollywood's been making um, movies with guns, what, for 100 years or so? Yeah, since these guns and, were around. Since, they, yeah, since yeah. movies were around. And, <laughs> you know, realistically, I, I mean, they, they have a pretty good record. And I'm, and I'm sure it didn't start off real well, safety-wise and all that. But, you know, over that time, I mean, I, I know of two fatalities. One was a freak accident, and the other one was just negligence uh, that have happened there. But, I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find a movie. If you pick any ten random movie titles, um, easily seven or eight of them probably have at least one scene in them with a gun. With a gun. And, How about you know, John Wick? <laughs> well, yeah. and they, they had a gun in that one. But How I mean, many guns? Well, they've been doing this for a long time, though. So, I mean, they have protocols in place that weren't being being followed for whatever reason and it was a number of people that did that and um you know rather than you know try to figure out what went on the reaction is okay we have to ban guns there's a a, a california legislator now that uh that's introducing a bill to ban guns on hollywood sets you know there's a, a petition being circulated in hollywood with these goofball actors yeah we need to ban guns and you know they have prop guns on sets they have real guns on sets and, you know, depending on what they're doing and what the scene is and, and what they have to show, they use the real gun or they use the prop gun. I mean, if you look at all those old John Wayne movies, the, uh, and, and all, the gun aficionados, all the FUDs out there get worked up because uh, when they're showing the, uh, the Winchesters, the, the uh, lever guns, you know, usually in those movies they were 1892 lever guns but the movie's based in the 1860s <laughs> but the reason they did that is because there's a whole bunch of 1892 guns available when they're making those movies the 1873 gun which would have been more period specific was not usually but i mean they've always used real guns for different things and you know the other discussion that came up too when we were off air was about um having live ammo on the set you know and um some people, Dave, was <laughs> was uh, saying, you know, you should never have that. And, you know, and I agree, not on the set. But um, it, the woman that was um, that was killed, Halnia, Hal is that he said her name? Halnia yeah. Hudson was killed. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and she was saying that a couple of days before this happened, she had, I think she tweeted it. It was on social media. Um, but she was saying to one of her friends, she was saying, you know, what's great about working a Western is during downtime you get to ride horses. And, you know, if you're a gun person, you're working a Western, you're out in the middle of nowhere, you've got these cool period guns. Um, the one that, that uh, was involved with Baldwin was, I think, a Uberti. It was a, uh, a replica of, a, um, of an old Cold, Cold Peacemaker. Army. Cold Peacemaker. And, yeah, and you're, you're there with these things. You're out in the middle of nowhere. you got hours to kill. Why would you not um, do some recreational shooting with those? The... the you know, the, the thing after that, and we do this all the time as gun owners, you take the gun, you do your recreational shooting, you bring it back, you clear the gun, you put the gun away. When they have to use the gun for something else, the person gets the gun out, they clear the gun, and they do what they need to do with that's it. That's why I said on the set. Oh, yeah, and that, that's what I was saying, too. It's not, you know, eh, set, you set, being, me under the bus. set being confined to where they're actually shooting the, your the film. eggs are in serious. But, <laughs> But um, anyway, you know, it's just it's some. I, I think it's a matter of responsibility. I think we see that throughout um, throughout our society in a bunch of different things. This it's, was a perfect storm, is what this was. It, well, I I think what they're going to find out is a number of people, including Baldwin, the armor, who again they said was pretty inexperienced, and you can imagine what happened there. I mean, I've worked, you know, it's twenty three years in industry. I know people exactly like Baldwin, and I've worked with people sure. like that. And you could tell, you know, you could see he's the star of the movie. He's the producer of the movie. You know, I'm Alec Baldwin. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And you could see how that would be intimidating to people. And, and I'm not saying that happened, but, you know, they'll find out eventually. It's a good scenario. But whatever happened, you know, at least three or four people did not know, did not do what they should have done. And, um, you know, and they'll figure out why that happened. But, again, it's, it, it it's a matter of responsibility. Yeah, and it seems like, all right, well – it seems like it's they want to throw all the like as if the safety rules don't work. Well, I think this is actually confirmation that the safety rules do work because when they're followed, this doesn't happen. Well, and that's why they have those protocols. And like you're saying, I feel it's exactly the same with the four rules. You never point a gun at someone. Well, you do if you're filming a movie 
And that's what it calls for. You just, there are protocols. There's ways to do it. Before and, you point the gun. And that's what you have to do. And that's what, like I said, there's there were other interviews with like Ray Liotta, Kirstie Alley. They said done it hundreds of times. That's how it is all the time. Nobody says, hold gun here and hands it to you. And you just go with it. I mean, that's not that's not the way it's done. And that that's, um, you know, it's unfortunate, I think, that that kind of stuff happened. It is, and I want to make clear, I don't care about Hollywood at all. I'm not defending them. I don't really give a rip. I mean, I think that they far too often uh, portray guns as being bad, and the only kind of gun owners they show are the, are, the, are criminals. Um, so I'm not defending them at all, but what I'm hoping to do is to elevate the conversation, which is exactly what Joe's article did. Um, you know, let's talk about this like like serious professionals who know what we're talking about rather than just name call and, and do snarky little, you know, uh, Alec Baldwin memes. It's, it, it makes us look bad. Well, and that's what I'm saying. You know, and there's no need to ban guns. There's no need for new laws. You know, it's nope. just they need to find out, okay, yeah. why weren't the, the protocols followed and then fix that. But, I mean, uh, it's a, just a matter of taking responsibility, which I'm afraid we don't see as much. We're not going to ban cars should. when there's an accident on set and somebody dies. I mean, really. So Jackson, how important is gun safety, buddy? Very, very important. I think that sums it up, man, right there. And that's coming from an eight-year-old, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Who's a better shot than I think just a mate. Joe, <laughs> Joe might be able to take him on a good day, but the rest of us, we've you know we got what? a lot of work to, get to yeah. do. Yeah, we ought to put you two together. What do you think? <laughs> yep. Do, All right. Do a little challenge competition. accepted there. Sounds huh? like a ch- <laughs> I don't know, man. You better. You better go get your new contact lenses. <laughs> there's like no winning. You know what I mean? Like if you lose, you lose. Yeah. If you win, you lose. It's, yeah. There's yeah. No winning. He hasn't got a prayer. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. Listen to Gun Owners Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. Gunfighter Tactical, one of our favorite shops in San Diego, released their new pistol, the Bandit at Gun Prom. And we're going to talk to Lee about it next. All right. But first, we are so proud to partner with the National Concealed Carry Association as a 10 ring partner. And CCA exists to serve the Second Amendment community by providing a nationwide network of 2A advocates. They offer elite self-defense and concealed carry training from the nation's top instructors. And they provide rock-bottom prices on the best selection of gear and accessories. Join them today. Members get great prices and free shipping. You can learn a whole lot more about them at at, at, yeah. National Concealed Carry Association dot <laughs> com. Choked up there for a second. I know. You got, you got a little emotional. I know. So Jackson, who we got how, online? How's he doing, Jackson? Is he doing all right? Yes. Just try and get into the program. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I will, my friend. Yeah, thank you, Jackson. I appreciate the. the That's clarity. why you're here. I appreciate the clarity there. Hey, so we're talking to Lee from Gunfighter Tactical. Gunfighter Tactical. Just won uh, San Diego County Gun Owner's Shop of the Year for two years in a row. Wow. Which I believe makes it the fourth time you guys have won it, right, Lee? That is correct. It's a pride and joy, I would say. Congratulations. I, we're only Our organization is only six years old, so out of the, yeah. the, six, the six years that we've been around, you guys have been the Shop of the Year uh, four times. Yeah, four it's funny because we're only, we're only seven years old, and I look back at it, and I remember the first gun prom, and I was like, why do I need to go to this dinner thing? Like, what is this group? What's going on? And Warren was like, no, 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 bro. You need to go. You need to go. And I'm like, uh, okay. You know, I found out about it. Hey, there's only one our first award. <laughs> have, you, have you been taking Michael to Denny's for spaghetti? Is that how you won these awards? <laughs> it's, it's delicious. Um, it's, maybe. It is good. Ah! It's none of your business. That's See, look at that. Another you know that? spaghetti enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> but they had, and I got to tell you, you guys. I mean, it's it's not it's not even close, man. Some years, yeah, it's a little close. There have been a couple years that uh, you know some other shops really stepped up, and and uh, but you guys have been amazingly supportive, especially considering you, you know your size. You guys have I don't know. You guys, what, what do you have? Like a half a do- at your peak, you had like a half a dozen employees. Um, yeah, you, you're not a huge. Uh, enormous shop but but as far as the support you guys give uh you know it, it's amazing it's it, it's extremely appreciated and it's it's very effective and i can't tell you how much i truly appreciate it truly um so thank you lee you guys are doing an excellent job oh i mean absolutely i mean i i don't think we would be around if you guys weren't to be honest you know like you guys have done the fight we just get to grab your coattails 
Well, that is a very nice thing to say. I know you guys would be, though, but that is an extremely nice thing to say. And I'll say it's a team effort. It, the right can't do it without the left. There you go. Exactly. So talk That's to people true. about That's Gunfighter true. Tactical. Uh, well, we've taken a step back from the you know traditional gun store and uh, filled into a role of customizing guns. You bring me something with a serial number, and I'll turn it into whatever you want. You know, um, any kind of customization you can think of, machining, Cerakote, stippling, laser work. I mean, you think of it, we can do it at this point. And it's all in-house. So and, that's what's really cool about it. And you guys were the uh, showstoppers at, at Gun Prom. What, uh, talk about the, awesome. uh, the, the guns that you guys donated. Uh, so we did a couple we did an apocalyptic themed twenty two because uh, the old saying is twenty two is going to be the only ammo left around. Well, we all know that's not true now. <laughs> but uh, so we did that, and then we did a van Glock, which I would be happy to say that just got uh, intellectual property kicked off Instagram. So that means we did a really good job. <laughs> um, and then we did a a couple of like a lower and stuff, but we did a uh, uh, a kind of a pride and joy. We did our Bandit, which is our new 9 mil AR pistol that is designed, cut, seracoded, lasered, built, and anything you can think of in the same exact room. So, and, and, start to finish. And, you, and the very first one, you guys rolled this out at Gun Prom. This is the first time it's ever yep. been uh, yep. uh, out in the public, right? Yeah, first eyes on it were at that very night. Well, thank you for doing that. Okay, so talk about why it, it, it's, it's awesome. I love it. Um, but talk about what makes it unique. Well, I mean, as you guys know, AR pistols are hard to come by in this state, and we've always had a pride and joy of putting those out for as many law-abiding citizens as we can get. Um, and, I mean, 9 mil is fun. So, and, and it takes, B, it, it, takes it takes, it takes, <laughs> yeah, using, what is, I think that's the transitive property, yeah. Joe, isn't it? You're an yeah. engineer. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, sure. The transitive property. So, Lee, what is an AR pistol for somebody maybe just tuned in that are not that knowledgeable? So an AR pistol is much like the AR rifle. However, the barrel is considerably shorter, and it does not have a stock. Um, it has a some sort of brace or straight tube or something like that. But because it does not have a stock, it does not fall under the actual rifle property so that you can have a shorter barrel and not be what's called a short-barreled rifle, which is a federal tax stamp issue that is not legal in California. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a way to get around that but still have a shorter gun. And it, um, but it works. It, 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 it's a it's an AR pattern, right? It works all these oh, yeah. t- same internals. Exactly the same. It's a, a direct yep. uh, impingement, right? Or is it a piston? No. Well, this one, uh, because it's 9 mil, it's actually blowback. Um, so it doesn't have a gas system or a piston system. It just works based on the uh, the firing of the round. actually blows back the bolt itself. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I didn't know that. And yeah. it takes Glock mags, right? That's right. Yep. So any Glock mags. any nine millimeter Glock mag will work in your uh, in the Bandit, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. That that was a huge uh, must that we put into this gun. You know, Glocks are so prevalent these days, and Glock mags even more, and especially with companies like Magpul and um, there's one other company I can't remember off the top of my head, but they, their mag mag or Glock pattern mags are just making a comeback. And so, I mean, everyone got them. Why don't you have two weapon systems that use them? And okay, so most common question, I got, I, we got it all night. And I'm still getting it. Why is an AR pistol legal? How come you guys can can make AR pistols and, and sell them in California? So we are a, a kind of a special breed. We are a Type Seven manufacturer. We're, most gun shops are uh, their FFL is a Type One, which is the license to sell guns. We actually have a license to manufacture guns. So what we're manufacturing in our place of business is from you know block of aluminum to a full gun as a single shot gun it never it never becomes a semi-auto and then turns into a single shot and then back to a semi-auto blah blah blah, because that's what put the end to sse so many years ago with like glocks and sigs and you know stuff like that because the factory would trade as a semi-auto and then they'd ship it to california we'd get it turn it into a single shot and then draws it to you and then turn it back to a semi-auto can't do that anymore. That's the that's the loophole that we are we are you know going through is we are the manufacturer. We manufacture it as a single shot gun, is not a semi auto, and then 
you drove it in such a fa- such a fashion. Yeah, I mean, it's not a loophole. You guys are complying with with California law. Yeah, oh well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not. I mean, you it's, know. It's, we're we're finding the way to do what we need to do. That's exactly. All. So the single shot exemption that means uh, basically if once a, if a gun is semi automatic, if it's born mm-hmm. semi automatic, you can't turn it into a single shot uh, firearm. It's always semi automatic. But you guys Correct. are building it. It's born as a single shot AR. Yep. From from yep. ground up. So from the time you take the raw material and mold it uh, into an AR and turn it into a nine millimeter pistol, it is always a single shot uh, firearm, which which is exempt from the uh, pistol roster, right? Is that the correct? Okay. Yep. So so yep. if I go buy it, um, do you? I don't. Do you? What's what's average retail for a, for a bandit? Uh, we're playing with ideas right now. We're we're trying to limit because it is so new, and we're making them in house. We're trying to limit the custom customized versions, where we're going to be like, okay, you can get a five inch barrel or an eight inch barrel, and the and the um, rail size to match, and then you pick your color because it's all going to be custom built. You know, you you pick your barrel size, you pick your color. Everything else is just spec off the wall. So we're trying to get a good price range um depending on you know we can go high end we can go middle of the road so we're trying to find a real clean place but we're probably going to be between 15 and 2 15 my guess 1500 bucks and 2000 dollars. that's an excellent price for that and so and that's that i mean remember that's custom color picked that's custom barrel length you know it's built to your specifications yep built to your specs awesome price for that Okay, so once you get your AR, you've you've picked the barrel length, mm-hmm. you've picked the color and everything that you want, all the bells and whistles. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a single shot AR in nine millimeter, mm-hmm. but yep. then from there, um, it's people if they want to make it semi automatic, they can do that, and then that's legal, right? That is legal, yeah, because so, it's now it's not a it's not a question of a business transferring property; it's your own private property and the modifications you do to it, and there's. You know, nothing that says you can't do that. And in fact, um, because we know people may or may not want to do that, we've actually built in a California magazine lock system into the gun already. I see. So that so that makes it comply with the uh, assault weapons uh, law. right? Correct. Yeah. So 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 there you go. And it's California legal. So So either way, you're covered. They're making a really cool AR nine millimeter pistol mm-hmm. they're doing it legal they're doing it custom and they're doing it for a good price i'd treat it like a custom car you want to you want yep. this engine it's going to cost this much you want a bigger engine it's going to cost this much you want four-wheel disc brakes yep. it's going to cost this much how not down, down the, the road how are 100 percent we're going to do that how, yeah. right now because we're making them in-house we're just trying to make as many as we possibly can to fill the demand so down the road a little bit, it's going to be a totally custom pick every single part as we go. But right now, we're just trying to mass produce them. How long does it take you to like, build okay, one? What color? How long does it take you to build one? I mean, we started cutting uh, a week ago. And between all the other projects, we have about 10 that are in some sort of process. So it takes we can pump out. If we don't full steam ahead, we can do about 10 a week at an easy pace. So if I came in and I said, I need, I want a gun... And here's my specs, A to Z. What what are we looking at? A week, two weeks? Uh, it just depends on you know how how custom you do want those specs. If you want some random obscure thing that I've never heard of, I'm going to have to order it retail and okay. You know, well, rent up let, to them let, on let's shipping. just say I'm giving you a pretty basic. You know, I'm not I'm not over the top, and I mean maybe you've already made 500 of them. But if I came in, yeah. and, but but my color is maybe different than what you're used to having on the stuff that you have on the shelf. I'm just kind of get an idea. Like for example, if I take my car into a, a shop, he's going to tell me two years. Okay, but if I t- oh no 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 yeah. no no I know it's not going to take you two years. But I'm saying yeah. so if you're saying well we can do that in a week or we can do it in two weeks. Oh yeah. So what my goal is to do is to stockpile a bunch of lowers so that when someone comes gotcha. in, all we have to do is paint it and build it. Gotcha. And then it'll take us less than a week. Gotcha. You know? That's what and I was. It'll thinking. be ridiculous. Right. And yeah, then once so you get, then once you get the, because there's going to be a, yet. there's going to be a lot of people that will buy whatever you have already made on the shelf. I mean, yeah, because your imagination is far out there more than the the everyday, you know, gun owner. You're going to show them stuff that they're going to say, "Wow, I never seen that before. That's amazing." Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's kind of what we're known for. You walk into our case and you look at the guns in there and Whoa. you go, oh, what kind of gun is that? You go, that's just a Glock. Yeah. Like, we did all that to it, but that's a factory Gen 3 Glock. And they're like, oh, wow. What's your website? 
gunfightertactical.com. Jeez, make it difficult. All right, buddy. Hey, yeah. we look forward to talking to you down the road, and congratulations on the award. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, and thank you guys. Hey, Jackson, my friend Brittany says you're the coolest kid in the world, so I don't know about that. Are these guys treating you right? Yeah. <laughs> We're not paying him, though. That's the only problem. Uh, he he came with a whole bucket of uh, candy for us. Today. That's right. How cool is that? Oh, so he's treating you guys right. Oh, oh man. That, know, that is right? a cool kid right well, there. Michael's eating like crazy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, buddy. Take care and enjoy. You know Brittany. Don't All right, you? guys. The recoil NFT auction with Top Shot Chris Chang raised over $30,000 for the Firearms Policy Coalition. The Pink Pistols and the Asian and Pacific American Gun Owners Association. But first, if you have legal matters that involve firearms that you need to call, then you need to call Attorney John Dillon. If you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe you just need to know if your guns are California compliant, well, you can call our trusted firearms attorney, John Dillon. John Dillon specializes in California gun laws. Call 760 760- 642-7150 or you can visit his website at dylanlawgp.com all right so we had uh, at uh, gun prom we had something very very cool uh, we had chris chang come out and talk about the nft auction the recoil nft auction and uh, we're having him back today to talk about the results of the auction chris you there yes hey good afternoon thanks for having me on as always you bet how you doing man Hey, yeah, I can't complain. The weather's great up here in Northern California, and uh, yeah, just enjoying the weekend. We got our buddy uh, Jackson, Action Jackson, here with his uh, service dog hey, Chase. Hey, Jackson! Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. So he's uh, he's co-hosting for us. Um, so, awesome. Yeah. So talk to us about how did the uh, how did the uh, recoil auction go? The results couldn't have been uh, more exciting, and uh, it exceeded expectations. And you know, having raised you know over thirty thousand dollars, and and also for the for the record, uh, a portion of those proceeds will be going to the Firearms Policy Coalition, the Pink Pistols, and APA GOA. Um, so yeah, some of the costs are going to go to cover what the top five of the ten winners are about to receive here in the coming months, which is an in-person fun shoot, uh, you know, here most likely at uh, at my private range that I'm building up here in Northern California. And, uh, you know, it's just basically going to be unlimited ammo, a whole bunch of fun guns. We're going to celebrate the Second Amendment, have a great time, make some new friends. And so, you know, this, this NFT auction, though, right, it's this new way of collecting things online, right? And in this case, it's digital cover art. And, you know, the top bidder paid $10,000 for serial number one wow. of this recoil issue 56 NFT, which is, this is jaw dropping. I just, I, I was hoping right, someone would pay something like $10,000. I didn't really actually think it was going to happen. Um, and the number two position uh, was $7,200 for the serial number two. Um, you know, copy of the NFT. And so, you know, this is, you know, these 10 winners of the first of its kind NFT auction in the firearms community, these 10 people are now enshrined in history, right? And are a part of what I continue to believe is going to be a new way for gun owners, for Second Amendment advocates, for advocates of liberty and freedom. It's a new way for us to, to talk about and to own and to put our money where our mouths are with respect to what we believe in, our lifestyles, our, our ways of life. And you see this in other sporting leagues, the NBA, for example, with basketball. They have created NBA Top Shot, and they have sold over $780 million worth of these NFTs and onboarded almost 500,000 users in a little over a year. So what, seven hundred and eighty million dollars? Is that yeah, what you said? It, it's that that is what I said. Seven hundred and eighty million dollars of NBA branded NFTs in just over a year. And all the major sporting leagues are either already doing this, right? They they're setting up their own NFT marketplaces That's or they enormous. intend it's yeah, the 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 amount of potential here for the NFT space is 
tremendous. And thankfully, you know, everyone's starting to uh, you know, wake up to this notion that how we own digital goods has forever changed moving forward. And the only way that this has been made possible is because of new technology. You know, you might have heard of the blockchain and right cryptocurrency. NFTs are just an, yeah, another addition here in terms of what this new technology can provide, which is authenticating the ownership hmm. of these digital goods. And over time, as these NFTs, you know, trade hands, you know, these recoil um, NFTs, for example, you know, go from me to these now 10 winners. And, you know, there are some of these winners are actually entities. They're not just people. Uh, so Gun Owners Radio, right? For example, uh, mm -hmm. I believe you guys came in at seventh or eighth. And so right, you're owning right, a piece of cover art that represents the notion that the Second Amendment is for all. So and that's a very powerful message. Oh yeah, go it ahead. Is, it is. I was going to say. So explain. So there was a at the at the dinner. Uh, explain how the SDCGO auction item affected the NFT winner. Yeah. So what was so cool about what happened at Gun Prom is, um, you know, I donated an autographed hard copy of Recoil magazine plus an autographed copy of the T-shirt that I was wearing. And it was uh, put up in a really, really classy, stylish uh, light box. And whoever won that gun from auction item was entitled to a second in-person fun shoot ticket. And mm -hmm. so they had to win both uh, the gun prom auction item plus place in the top five of the NFT auction. And I'm really happy and proud to say that John Dillon, <laughs> yeah. who is a California-based lawyer, you know, he won the gun prom auction item, and then he also placed fourth. So, you know, not only is he, you know, he won the serial number four of the recoil NFT, but now he gets to, uh, you know, assuming he wants to come and shoot with me, he gets to bring a, an, an, a, you know, a buddy, a family member, a friend, uh, you know, to come and join this uh, this really exciting event that will be happening. I'm a buddy. Month. He should bring me. I actually, you know, right. I actually, I had to deliver it to him. He he forgot to take it home with him, so I had to deliver it to him. That should that should get that me should a, count for something. That should count for something. I should right, be right. Yeah, I agree. You should you should, uh, you should call John and let him let him know how good of a buddy you are. <laughs> exactly. I think Joe's already going tonight, right, Joe? <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to bring him anything though. <laughs> So, so what's next? How does it, what's the, now? This sounds like it was amazingly successful. What, what's it going to lead to, or what's the, what is this a catalyst for? Yeah. So, you know, this is the first shot across the bow. And, you know, I was excited about the potential for entities in the gun space many, many months ago. You know, Recoil and I, we started planning and talking about this about five months ago. And, you know, recoil, to be frank, you know, the, the executive team, they were a little split on whether this was going to be successful or not. And I told them, like, hey, say, frankly, I don't know whether this is going to be successful or not. But, you know, the only way that we can innovate and stay ahead of the game in the advocacy space or even just having fun and, 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 and doing new things in our lives is we have to try new things. And so um, the recoil team and I, we're going to be meeting here, um, you know, over the next you know, few days and weeks and, and talk about, all right, you know, well, what about, for example, Maj Therese's cover of recoil that he was on earlier this year? Uh, Bonnie Rotten was just on the cover of recoil. And, and so what about not just past covers, but future covers as well? You know, I believe that this could be a brand new revenue model for the publishing industry at large. And Recoil, right, is one of, uh, I would say, you know, publications that is on the very, very cutting edge. And, right, we just created $31,000 of value in NFTs out of nowhere, right? And in, in, in one Sunday morning, we all just did a, a really astounding thing. And that value creation, right, we now have 10 owners of, of this NFT that are proud owners that are going to continue to carry the banner that the 2A is for all. 
and that's a very powerful message. That's 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 this new vehicle, right? These NFTs. You know, when Gun Owners Radio or John Dillon or or you know any of these other owners, right? When people ask them, "Hey, do you own any NFTs?" Oh, you do. Oh, which ones do you own? Naturally, they're going to talk about this recoil NFT and why they bought it because they believe in our Second Amendment rights because they support, hopefully me, <laughs> right? And they support Recoil Magazine, and they support the gun community at large, right? So that's the kind of, of, of it's, it's a new way for us. NFTs are a new way for us to talk about our passions, our hobbies, our interests. And I'm really excited for what Recoil, uh, and, and uh, quite frankly, I've got some, uh, you know, some, some things cooking in the hopper too. So, you know, this will definitely not be the last. Do you, uh, <laughs> do you, do you uh, from me and, and recall? Do you secretly hope that uh, that the the next ones don't go for more than ten thousand dollars? Though, do you kind of hope that? No, no, no. So <laughs> this is where it's win win, right? So if the next ones sell for more, well, then we just establish, right? We would be raising the bar, right? That there's even a higher ceiling. Right? I might for bid on the Bonnie energy. Rotten one. I got to tell you. Yeah, cover. yeah. So get excited. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Chris. In awesome a state where your self-defense rights are under attack. Let us be your voice to help defend and restore the Second Amendment. Help spread the word about the fight. There's two easy things you can do. One, like and subscribe to the show on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, Instagram, the podcast, or whatever way you like to listen to the show. Also, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It helps boost the show and puts it in front of of a lot of people. All right, our favorite subject is coming up right now. Stump my nephew. That's right. So every week, if you write in, uh, send us a some kind of gun trivia. And if we use your question on the air, we'll give you a hat or a shirt. Um, if you stump my nephew, we found out that my nephew, Sam, is extremely good at, at gun trivia. And uh, so uh, if you stump my nephew, you get a lifetime of training from from uh, uh, from uh, what's the name of it? What's the name of it, Jackson? Front sight. That's exactly right. Jackson's gonna ask the question. Jackson's on the show because uh, we needed a uh, a little bit more youth perspective. We went, we decided to go really young, right? How old are you again? Eight. Nice. We decided the show was a little too pale, male, and stale. So you're here to to jazz up and uh, get the the youth demographic excited. How do you, how do you feel about that? Great, and it's an honor to be here. Well, it's an honor having you here, man. You're doing a great job. All right, let me let me introduce you. You talked to him last week, but I'm going to introduce you to my nephew, Sam. Sam, you there? Yeah, how are you guys? Good, man. How are you? I'm all right. You're no longer the youngest person on the show. How does that feel? I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> Jackson's here. He's here with his dog, Chase, his service dog. Who's awesome? I actually, I, I'll just let everybody know a little secret. I actually got to, I got to pet Chase a couple minutes ago. It was awesome. You're not supposed to. Don't tell anybody. It's just between us. But I may, maybe, may have pet him a little bit. So, all right, my friend, are you ready for the? Uh, you ready for the question, Sam? Yeah, I hope so. You guys have been hitting me hard lately, so uh, I'm. Well, let's hear it. Yeah, this one's not bad. I, I, I don't know. I have faith. I think you'll be able to do this one. So this one is from Gregory in Encinitas, and he asks, What is Magpul FMG9? What is a Magpul FMG9, Sam? Gregory from Encinitas, thanks for writing in. Um, now, most of you probably know Magpul for their EMAG magazines um, and for all sorts of other molded plastic accessories. Uh, like grips and stocks and, and all sorts of other furniture pieces like that. But they have also done um, some small arms research of their own. Uh, and one of the firearms that they designed in-house was called the FMG-9. And this was, I think, about 12 years ago, 13 years ago or so, that they revealed this at SHOT. And it stands for Folding Machine Gun. This was a submachine gun that folded in half into something more resembling a briefcase, the idea being that it would be useful for um, security personnel who had to look a little more discreet, like Secret Service agents. That sounds right. The question or the answer they wrote is the prototype for Magpul looks like a box with a flashlight attached to it, but look a little closer and you'll see it's actually a submachine gun. 
It was developed as a personal protection weapon for the U.S. Secret Service or possibly law enforcement agencies. The gun is small enough to be disguised as a small package or laptop battery and can fit in a pants pocket. You got it right. How did you know that, man? Um, It's such a distinctive design that I would be remiss if I didn't at least uh, know it by name, if uh, if not more details about it. Uh, That's a great answer. (laughs) You ever shot one? Um, I have not. Unfortunately, they only reached the prototype stage. Um, One company, I forget who it was. It might have been Zev at shot 2021, I think said that they were working on trying to bring it back, but hmm. nothing's been heard since then. So it might just be, if you'll pardon the pun, another flash in the pan. I get it. I get it. Have you ever been to SHOT Show? I have not. You got to go to SHOT Show. Are you going to go? You, we got to get you to, you think you, I wonder if you can go this year. Do you have time to go this year? Probably not. Or is that college thing getting in the way? Yeah. You got to go to SHOT Show, man. You're a famous uh, radio uh, Second Amendment guy. I think it'd be interesting. You can I'll, uh, take your word for it on the famous part, but it would definitely be interesting. That much industry stuff concentrated in in that kind of a space is pretty uh, pretty special. Jackson, you ever been to Shot Show? Not yet. N- not yet. Are you going? Someday. Someday. It sounds fun, huh? Very. Well, can I go? If you go. Yep. I don't know if I can keep up with you and Chase, though. I got to tell you. <laughs> Hey, Sam, has anybody from your store ever been to SHOT Show? Um, yeah, I've, I've heard people say, I mean, I, I can't remember names specifically, mm-hmm. but I've, I've heard a couple of people say they've been to SHOT and that it was just as impressive as uh, you would pick up from the press coverage. Yeah, well, if somebody from your store went, maybe one day when the time's right, you can Oh, oh you're talking, talking employees at the store. Correct. Uh, no. I don't think anyone outside of uh, the the two owners of the company right. has been. I don't think, but yeah. I, I'm not positive. Do you know? So this Magpul, do you know? Was it based on 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 something else? Was it based on some other chassis or firearm? I don't think it was. Uh, I don't know all that much about the inner workings, seeing as it only it only made it to the prototype stage. Um, I gather that it was a pretty conventional, simple blowback design. Um, and that there wasn't a whole lot unique about it except the form factor. They were trying to keep the the parts that could be simple relatively simple and work hard on um, perfecting the parts that were unique, namely the folding in half thing. Um, but it, I mean, that, that's that's a pretty well understood system. A, a simple blowback submachine gun. There have been a lot of those through the years. I don't even. Does Magpul? Do they make firearms, or are they just accessories? I can't. Even, I'm, I'm trying to think of a of a Magpul firearm. Or was this was this Magpul? Or? Magpul does not make any firearms of their own, but they did design another firearm that you have almost certainly seen an example of, or at least heard of. Um, the Bushmaster ACR, made by mm. Remington, was actually designed by Magpul as the Masada, and then they sold the design off because they didn't really have the in-house. Uh, production capability. There are a lot of uh, firms that have designed firearms but couldn't make them themselves, so they had to contract that out. Armalite is actually an example. Yeah, I'm looking around the room. We we already we all knew that, Sam. I mean, that's pretty obvious. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> hey, so we were talking about the Alec Baldwin thing, um, and I'm I didn't. You're not prepared for this at all. I didn't prepare you. I'm putting you on the spot. But He's what are you prepared for anything? I know we always put him on the spot. That's yeah. the whole point of the yeah, segment. That's the whole point of the show. But what are your thoughts on what happened with, uh, or what you know, or what you've read as far as the uh, Alec Baldwin movie set incident? Well, I've been talking about it with family and coworkers, and the way I like to look at this is sort of tracing it backwards from the moment the trigger was squeezed. Obviously, Alec Baldwin is was at fault um, in primarily because he was being irresponsible. He was breaking all four rules of gun safety. Um, Back from that, he should have known how to ensure that the firearm was clear. Otherwise, he shouldn't have been handling it. Uh, Beyond that, whichever person on the set, whomever handed him the, uh, the firearm, who didn't check it first to ensure that it wasn't loaded, which obviously it was, 
they were also at fault because you should not really hand someone a loaded gun unless they know for sure you're handing them a loaded gun. Um, really, I would say that you there are very, very rare circumstances you should hand someone a loaded gun at all. They should You just hand it to them empty, they load it themselves. Then back from that, there might be some issues on set with um, how ammunition was being handled. Clearly, live ammunition got into an area where it wasn't supposed to be. And it's always very important, even when you're doing your dry fire practice at home, that you completely isolate your live ammo from your dummy rounds or snap caps or uh, what have you. So multiple different people were at fault. Baldwin definitely was. At least one other person was. Have you read much about the the head armor that was in that was uh, in charge of the set? Um, I've I've looked a little bit. Uh, I whenever there's something like this that happens, there's always this uh, this temptation to dig up people's past and uh, decide. Oh, clearly this was a bad person, um, regardless of that individual's technical qualifications. So I don't really want to take a stance on that. Um, what is known for sure is that the head armorer was uh, Thel Reed's daughter, and he's a, a pretty prominent Hollywood armorer and cowboy action shooter. So uh, I would be surprised if um, if she did not receive proper training on weapons handling from her father. Yeah, I think I think she's probably I think I think she's going to take the the brunt of this. To be and honest, that was with you. that was a very good analogy of the situation. <clears throat> by the way, I just want yeah. to bring that up because we bounced it around quite a bit and i think you you probably put it out as succinct as anybody could seriously well in in the end everything does kind of come back to the head armor um so if even if there was an issue of someone not knowing how to do something properly they should have been instructed on how to do so i'm not sure how much of a role the the head armor plays in this as I said, we have to wait for um, the facts. more facts to come out yeah. from the investigation. Well, excellent job. You got your question right. And Absolutely. then some, as always, great, great job. Stump my nephew, Sam the Gunman. Uh, you saved me a uh, front site membership. I don't have to give one away this week, so that's <laughs> awesome. Well, right. was a, this was a good one this week. Thanks yeah. very much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, buddy. Take care. Say hi to the family. Yep, you guys have a good night. All right, folks, subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, YouTube, or whatever your favorite flavor is. And please support all our great sponsors. San Diego County Gun Owner, U.S. Law Shield, the Dillon Law Group, PRMI Mortgage, 365 Glacier, Scott Vincent at Coldwell Banker Royalty Realty, and National Concealed Carry Association. Thanks to Michael Schwartz, Sam the Gunman, Joe Jermisi, and Joe in the Box with his lovely assistant, Brendan Thomas and Jackson and Chase. Absolutely. Right here on FM 961 AM 1170. The answer.